September 4th, 1967, when I went to the tanks to introduce myself, Ted was talking to two people, Rick Crooker and Luther Jones. I re actually, he was drooling over two people, Rick Crooker and Luther Jones, and he kind of looked at me and said, go over there and do something, uh, which is probably the best thing he could have said to me in terms of motivating me because I tend to respond well when you, go, when you tell me you can't do something. And that was my first hint that Ted is a master motivator. I came to Penn to row for Ted. Ted didn't know that. <laughs> he had no, I was not recruited. And I went to, I, I had three choices and I chose Penn over Harvard and, and Princeton. And I don't regret that decision one damn bit. Um, and I came with the idea that I would, of course I'd be in the boat and I would row for Ted. I had no clue what I was doing. Not a clue. And, and that played out over the time. But I have, I'm astonished when I look back to think about what an idiot I was. But I've proven many times that I am an idiot. Um, I realized I was not Ted's cup of tea. I was short and I was a preppy. And he did the best to get me out of the boat. But I also knew, and this is an important lesson that he taught me, that if I was, if the boat went faster with me in the boat, I was gonna be in the boat. And he treated everyone fairly. You always knew that he put the boat ahead of any individual. He, his job was to put the boat together and it was gonna be as fast as he could make it. And if you perform, you would be in the boat. Um, I will tell you that um, one thing that Ted taught me, we were running stadiums um, and we would jump into Ted's car. This is a true story. And one day we jumped into the VW, we're driving along on the expressway and some poor soul jumped off the Market Street Bridge. And Ted jammed on the brakes, the doors opened, there are five of us in there, I'm being the smallest guy. There are five of us in his VW, we all hop out. Ted jumps up on the bulwark, and as he's diving into the Schuylkill River to go after this poor soul, he said, stay there. I can tell you that it never crossed my mind to go anywhere else. But what it taught me was, don't ask people to do something that you wouldn't do yourself. And I think that every person who rode for Ted will tell you, he never asked you to do anything that he hadn't done or wouldn't do. Um, and I'd also learned from him the value of mystique and a good line of bullshit. Um, one day, Ted was a little late to practice. And somebody asked, it was a Monday, and somebody asked, "Where? how was your weekend? And he said, I just got back from Vietnam. And I looked at Luther Jones, and Luther Jones looked at me, and we both shrugged, and who are we to say he wasn't in Vietnam over the weekend? But let me talk about the 1972 boat. In 72, we had a pretty good team, and Ted bought an experimental boat called the Cedar Speeder. And the Cedar Speeder was a beautiful boat, made by Polcock, light, flexible, aluminum riggers that broke, and the first Cox box that anyone ever had. And we're racing in the Adams Cup, and it's a 15-knot headwind, and we're moving out on these guys, 
and Louis Deloso will tell you this story. Um, and all of a sudden, we make our move, uh, we're trying to move, leave these guys behind. There's a lot of water in the boat. And as we keep rowing, pretty soon the water's up to the seats. And at that point, Harvard managed to pass us. And what it turned out is that somebody whose name, well, will be mentioned, Ted, had been playing around with the boat and he took the bow decking off and he didn't put it back on correctly. So the bow decking filled up with water. We sunk. And thanks to Ted, I can say that I've been in, in two national magazines as a photograph. One was of Gene Clapp and I swimming in the middle of the Schuylkill saying, what the hell are we doing here? And the other one, we, we won the IRA and we were in Sports Illustrated. But I will never forget Louis Deloso standing on the coxswain seat saying, I can't swim. <laughs> at which point, all of us looked at him and said, now's a good time to learn. <laughs> um, the next week we raced Harvard in the Eastern Sprints. We drew them in the, in the heat. And every oarsman here knows that occasionally the boat is perfect. It runs. It's effortless. You feel like you want to go on forever. You do not want that feeling to end. It never happens in a race, but it happened to us once. And it was the heat of the Eastern Sprint. And our race plan was to go out for a thousand meters, say where we are, and then if we were ahead, start taking it down. Well, we crossed, we were half a length up at the thousand, and we crossed the finish line with open water. We were rowing at 28, Harvard was rowing at 38. And it was the most extraordinary row. And we thought, all right, we're set. The Cedar Speeder struck again. Um, we get into the finals and our Cox box fails. I now know why tech companies have beta versions. We had the alpha, the beta, and the final, and occasionally it didn't work. So we could, Louis couldn't talk to anyone. We rode a terrible, terrible race. The next week we rode against, we were gonna row against Northeastern who won the finals, won the uh, sprints, and Ted decided that we needed to learn how to row high. And we needed to take the base rate from 35 to 38 or 39 and learn how to row at that level. Because in spite of the fact that it was more effort, we picked up a lot of speed. And that was an instinct, that was how great a coach he was. Because he could figure out what it took for us to go as fast as we could go. And we learned how to row at 38 or 39. Fast forward to the IRA. Our race plan for the IRA was basically to start, settle for 20 strokes, do 20 strokes high, 20 down, up, down, up, down, preferably between 40 and 38, and see where we were after 1,000 meters. Our stroke, who is here tonight, Walter up the grave, is a, uh, is a, exactly, is a very articulate guy. He, wrote, he wrote for Money Magazine. He's a very good author. He sucks at math. <laughs> we started at 45. We settled to a 40. And we kept going 45, 40, 45, 40, through seven, until we were 500 meters to go by which time we had about two lengths of open water. And then we decided that we would settle down to 34 and, and row at home. Um, and we won easily. Um, and, I, and I say that, that boat, I don't know how fast we could have been, but it was, a, it was a real privilege to be part of that boat and to be coached by Ted. And I would just like to close on one thing. Ted. Back to Ted. Ted was a force of nature. He changed my life. He taught me many lessons that I've been able to use. In closing, I'd like to ask you all to raise a glass and give a toast to Ted. A great coach, a great teacher, 
and someone who changed the lives of probably everyone in this room, all for the better. Thank you, Ted, for everything you did for us.